Today we're starting a series all about wearable tools. What I mean by that is anything that you can put on your body to help facilitate or normalize a movement pattern, which I believe is the most critical component in retraining your brain after you've had damage to your brain or your spinal cord that's impacted your ability to move. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara. I'm a neurologic physical therapist. And on this channel, we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, mindset, in the context of neurologic injury, with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to reach your highest maximum level. With all that said, today's video and the next couple of videos is going to be a series on actual physical tools that you can wear to help normalize movement patterns. I'm dividing this up into three categories, what I call functional devices, which is what we're gonna cover in today's video, which is anything that you can wear that improves the quality of your movement and can be kept on throughout the day. We're gonna talk about splints and what those are important for and what I'm calling therapeutic wearable tools. So first, let's just talk about motor control big picture. In a healthy brain, motor control, the word, is the process of initiating, directing, and grading muscles in a coordinated effort to facilitate purposeful movements and or stabilize the body in a given set of environmental conditions. Now, in a healthy brain, this involves several brain areas to receive information from the body, interpret that information, and execute a movement or send a message to the body to execute a movement. Now, damage to one little area of the brain disrupts, in most cases, this entire motor control system and causes or creates what I call abnormal movement patterns. So what are the main abnormal movement patterns that I think are critical for you to understand before I dive into the tools, which is the main component of this video, the abnormal movement patterns that are the result of damage to the brain or the spinal cord are spasticity. And spasticity is an involuntary muscle contraction that is the result of damage to the brain or the brain's inability to be able to inhibit a movement. Abnormal movement patterns are also caused by just the brain's inability to communicate with certain muscles, which might appear to look like weakness. Abnormal synergy patterns can also cause a dysfunctional movement or movement to look not normal. And this is when muscles link up abnormally. So for example, you wanna straighten your knee out, but those knee muscles are linking up with the muscles that point the foot. So anytime you straighten your knee out, your foot points at the same time. Any one of those things can create an abnormal movement pattern and make it more difficult to relearn a normal movement pattern. And this is where tools are extremely valuable. So now I wanna talk about functional tools things that you can wear on your body that improve the quality of your movement and can be worn throughout the day. So what does that mean? It means they have to be kind of low profile, not very heavy, not bulky, and they have to not interfere with normal movements, which seems kind of like a no-brainer, but sometimes these functional devices can get so big and bulky that they actually create more harm than good. So when I talk about functional braces or functional tools, I really am talking about something that enhances your ability to efficiently move in your environment. And here's where this video is gonna get a little bit weird. Initially, I intended to do this all in one video, but it was extremely long, so I am cutting it up into a little mini series. So now we're gonna go ahead and cut away to the first part in this series, which is all about functional tools or functional braces. In today's video, the goal of this video is to give you a little bit more information about st stuff that you can buy kind of what we call off the shelf or on Amazon or at your local medical supply store to help normalize a movement pattern if you're someone that's dealing with spasticity in your calf muscle, weakness in the muscles that lift the foot up, or spasticity in the bicep where the arm bends up, spasticity in the wrist or an involuntary flexing of the wrist or an involuntary gripping of the hand. Those are the most common kind of movement dysfunctions that people can experience after damage to your brain 
brain or your spinal cord and the price range for devices or things to help normalize a movement pattern can range from ten dollars up to thousands of dollars so i think it's really important to kind of know the pros and the cons of all these devices because of course every company sells their device or advertises their device as kind of like the end all be all and a lot of them are not all they're cracked up to be so first let's just talk about functional braces functional braces can be broken down into two categories what i call off the shelf braces and custom braces. Custom braces are things where you have to go to an orthotist, they make a mold of your arm or your leg, or they make take measurements of your arm or your leg, and it's custom fit to the exact shape of your arm or your leg. And then off the shelf are things that I consider that are prefabricated, they're not custom, and they're things that you could probably buy on Amazon or your local uh, medical supply store or Sabo. A lot of you are familiar with Sabo products. I would consider those kind of off the shelf devices. So some of the pros of custom devices are that they're usually a little bit more durable and they're usually a little bit more comfortable because they're custom fit to your exact shape of your arm or your leg. Downsides of them is they are extremely expensive. Most people do need to go through their insurance so the authorization process can sometimes take a while so they can take up to four weeks to actually get something in your hands that you can use. And when you need adjustments or modifications, a lot of times you do have to go back into the orthotist. So again, that, that can kind of take a while as well off the shelf obviously they're you can get them in your hands faster they're cheaper some of the downsides are obviously they're not custom to you so they're maybe not as comfortable and they're usually not as durable. So when it comes to functional braces, let's talk about walking and things to help normalize walking. Of course, you guys have heard me talk about AFOs in a ton of videos, but I am gonna go a little bit deeper so you guys can understand the difference because I think some of you, when I say AFO, you think of things that you can buy off the shelf. And in most cases, when I'm talking about an AFO, I am talking about something custom. So first big picture, I wanna explain what an AFO is. An AFO stands for ankle, foot, orthosis. It is a brace that controls the ankle and the foot. They're primarily used to help control ankle motion, so either a weak ankle where you need a little bit of help lifting the foot up, or an overactive ankle where the foot points down really hard. Those two movement dysfunctions are the things that an AFO is a perfect tool to help control. So help lift the foot up, if you have a foot that doesn't lift up and control or inhibit a foot that involuntarily points down. Now an AFO, even though it just goes over the ankle and the foot, it can also help control knee recurvatum or knee hyperextension. And the reason for that is, is if you can control the ankle or keep the ankle flexed, the leg, the shin bone, the lower leg cannot go backwards because it's being controlled at the ankle. And so that is how you can control knee recurvatum bottom, an AFO can actually also control or facilitate knee extension. So for those of you that do not have quads or you have weakness in the muscles that straighten the leg out and your leg like buckles all the time, an AFO can actually help control that via that same mechanism. Because it kind of goes up the ankle and up the shin bone, that's how you control that shin bone. So if you stop that shin bone from coming forward, which is what happens when your knee buckles, that's why you can use an AFO to help control the knee. Now, let's talk about custom versus off the shelf. In my opinion, there is no off the shelf brace that you can buy that is going to control spasticity in the ankle. The only thing that is going to control spasticity in the ankle is a custom articulated AFO. So I wanna repeat that because I get this question a lot and I actually, even patients that have been watching my videos, new patients that I get that have been watching my videos for years, they come in with a whole bag full of stuff that they have bought on Amazon. There is nothing that you are gonna find on Amazon that will control a foot that involuntarily points down or involuntarily 
turns in. So there's some of you that are kind of the in-betweeners, meaning sometimes you can control your foot and sometimes you can't, or maybe you just have a little bit of rolling to the outside of your foot. I still do not think there's any strap or anything that you can buy off the shelf that will help control that little bit of inversion, and a custom brace will absolutely help to control that foot from inverting. So let's talk about some of the kind of AFOs or ankle braces, functional braces that you can get off the shelf and what they're good for. So you can buy what they call foot drop straps. Those are only intended for someone who has a true drop foot. If you have any involuntary movement at all, a foot drop strap is not gonna work. Now you'll also find things that are called AFOs on Amazon. I would consider these um, AFOs that are only good for foot drop. If it is off the shelf, and it is called an AFO on Amazon, the only thing it is good for is for a foot that is floppy. So yes, they do sell some AFOs off the shelf. Most of them are very low profile, but they will not control a foot that involuntarily points, points down or inverts primarily because they are low profile you really need something and i know especially for the women you guys hate this idea but you really need something that goes all the way around your foot but that does mean it does limit the types of shoes that you can wear and that's probably the number one goal that i get from most people is they want to get out of their afo so that they can wear uh, nicer shoes, but there is nothing that is going to control spasticity even a little bit that you can buy off the shelf. So AFOs on Amazon or off the shelf are strictly for someone that has foot drop. The other thing where an off the shelf brace that you could buy on Amazon is beneficial is if you have truly a knee that just buckles. So you don't have any involuntary movement, so you don't have knee hyperextension, but you just have a knee that you cannot straighten out. They do make braces called kind of uh, like a floor reaction AFO where it has a shell on the front of it. Uh, this is primarily for someone who's maybe in the early stages of MS where I've seen this could be beneficial but really it is only for someone who has or can't keep their knee straight. The nice thing about it is it's extremely low profile. Most of them, if they're off the shelf, the, the nice ones, the more expensive ones that are off the shelf, but the one that I would recommend are carbon, so they're extremely lightweight. And again, off the shelf, two main reasons, things that you can use them for is if you have foot drop or weakness in the quads and you can't straighten your leg out. Now there are a couple other functional braces that I rarely use, but I do want to go over because there are some therapists out there that still recommend them. And I don't know why, <laughs> but you can, so an AFO is an ankle foot orthosis. You can also get a KAFO, which is a knee ankle foot orthosis. So now they've just added another joint onto it. So now the brace comes all the way up to your hip almost and it has a knee joint on it. So the the theory behind it is if you don't have ankle control and you don't have knee control then you would want to come all the way up the leg. But remember what I said that you can really control the knee with just an AFO, an ankle foot orthosis. And so the I don't really see any reason you would go all the way up the leg. The only time that I would recommend a KAFO is for someone who is paraplegic, meaning they are completely paralyzed from the waist down, and these braces are good for standing or getting weight bearing. But other than that, they're not really functional. They go all the way up your leg, so if you put them over your pants, you can't go to the bathroom all day. If you put them under your pants, they're a little bit uncomfortable and you would need some extra, extra, extra large pants. So I mention it, but again, I don't necessarily, even though it's considered a functional brace, I don't consider it to be something functional because I just don't think it's practical. And then they also make an HKAFO, which literally comes all the way up to your waist. Again, I don't consider that a functional brace. The only time I've ever seen it is for someone who's paralyzed from the chest 
down and you want to block all of those joints so someone can get good weight bearing through the leg. But those are all the levels of kind of lower extremity custom braces. You can literally go all the way up to the waist. Now let's just talk about the knee and I've talked about this a lot before, an off the shelf brace that I think is excellent if you have an AFO and you still don't have good knee control, meaning your knee hyper extends, is a Swedish knee cage. I do consider it a functional brace. It's a brace that has like a metal bar that's padded that goes behind your knee. It is the only brace on the market that is going to stop your knee from hyper extending. I still think that the, the best brace to start with is an AFO. Again, you can control knee hyperextension with an AFO. If that doesn't work, then I would add what we call a Swedish knee cage. Again, it's one of those things where you either have to make that decision, do you put it over your pants? Do you put it under your pants? It's very bulky and a Swedish knee cage just because of the way that they need to be designed. When you bend your knee, they, they tend to slide down. So when you sit, they slide down. And then every time you stand up, you do have to pull it back up. So it's not ideal, but if you're going into Recovatum and an AFO is not working for you, it's absolutely essential to protect your knees. Now, as far as functional braces for the arm. There are a lot of things that people are selling right now that they're considering functional braces that I don't think actually work. So this brand Sabo, they sell a couple of things that they consider functional. Uh, one is the Sabo glove. So it has rubber bands in it that help to open your fingers. First of all, it's extremely hard to get this glove on. And this would only be for someone who already has hand movement and they just need a little bit extra extra. In my opinion, because of the cost of it, if you already have hand movement, that's excellent. You just need to keep doing that hand movement to make it stronger. I do not think it's a functional brace. I don't think it's practical. So that's my opinion on that. Now, there are OTs that also make what they call functional splints. I have yet to have a patient walk in with one that I thought actually worked. So again, I know that when it comes to the arm, it's extremely, you're extremely limited, but if you have any voluntary movement at all, I think the best way to make that movement stronger is just to do it over and over and over again. Now, Sabo also makes kind of like their next tier up more kind of durable or heavy duty, kind of, I think they're calling it a functional brace. And that is the Sabo Stretch and the Sabo Reach. Now, these are braces that have what I call kind of like outriggers on them. So basically the spring mechanism is kind of lifted off of your hand and your wrist a little bit. So the angle of pulls a little bit better. So it does a better job at extending the fingers. The Sabo Reach actually crosses the elbow joint as well and has some rubber bands and is an intended to straighten your elbow out. Now, I have never, first, I've never seen anyone be able to get this on themselves. It's ex extremely hard to get on. In my opinion, it's also very heavy. And in my opinion, I have not seen it add value to someone's ability to use their hand during the day. Again, if you already have a little bit of active movement, this is the only person that would be a candidate for this type of brace. And again, if you already have a little bit of active movement, my suggestion is just do the movement over and over and over again. I don't think that the cost of it is worth it given the benefit that you will get out of that brace. But again, it is a wearable brace and I do think that many clinicians would refer to those as functional braces. Now, for both the arm and the leg, this isn't necessarily a brace, but um, I do wanna just bring up functional e-stem. So Sabo sells a couple of products where you wear e-stem, an e-stem machine that stimulates the muscles that open the hand. There's also a brand called Bioness, which does the same thing um, for the arm. I, I personally have not seen functional e-stem for the hand. Any device that utilizes functional e-stem in the hand work functionally. I think it's a good training tool. The Bioness is a great training tool, but it's really expensive. Uh, and I don't really necessarily think it's worth the cost. You can go to your OT and they can teach you how to take a $50 
uh, and neuromuscular ESTEM machine and attach it to the electrodes and you can get the same benefit. So it's out there, I just don't think it's beneficial. The one for the leg is called the walk aid or Bioness also makes one where it stimulates the muscles that lift the foot. I rarely see it work on anyone that has spasticity. So I am a huge advocate of this device. So I recommend it a lot, but I do not think that it work. It is a good idea for anyone who has any spasticity or involuntary uh, pointing down of the foot because you, it is a trade-off. If you put this device on, then you can't wear your AFO. And I, I think you're at higher risk of that spasticity getting worse if you don't wear your AFO. But that's te technically what I would consider like a functional device, but not necessarily a brace. So that's why I bring it up. So I hope you guys found that helpful. I hope that helped you to understand if you have an AFO, if you have a, hopefully you don't have, but if you have a KAFO, help, hopefully it'll help you kind of understand where your device kind of fits in this tools category that we're doing in this series. Next week, I'm going to talk about splints, what those are, and therapeutic tools, which you should be a little bit familiar with if you've been around for a while, because I do use a lot of therapeutic tools with a lot of my exercises, but I'm going to do a deep dive on the rationale behind some of the therapeutic tools and what tools are best to relearn or restore what movements. If you're new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so that you'll get notified every time I upload new videos. As a reminder, we do a live Q&A the last Wednesday of every month, so that will be coming up in a couple of weeks. That's an opportunity for you to submit your questions in advance and join us where I will answer your questions live. So if you have questions specific to your conditions that I haven't yet answered in a video, definitely sign up for that. Link for that is in the description below. Now also in this video, I didn't show a ton of exercises and I do post exercises exercises several times a week on Instagram. So if you're not yet following us on Instagram, definitely head over there. I enjoyed spending time with you all and I will see you in the next video.